Welcome to the third part of the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Quick Look series on adding custom library components to the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Library. Today we talk about how we are going to validate the components, a very simple exercise. My name is Alex Cock, I'm the Territory Technical Manager for the ANZ, and we're just going to do a quick recap of what we've done so far in part one. We took a look at how the basic components have to be define what sort of information is required, where do we save it to, etc. And in part two, of course, we talked about defining the intelligence on the 3D component with the component wizard, looking specifically at connection points. In part three, which is right now, we're going to take a look at a simple test on how we can validate the component that we have added. And the question is, why? It's so hard, it's so tedious. Well, for starters, you want to check it before you roll it out. And two, this is the whole point of the presentation today. It's not that difficult. You just need a very simple test, and I'm going to take a look at that today. So again, these two have been covered in parts one and two. In case you missed that, please go check out the other presentation videos. We'll be looking at part three today. So let's take a look at how we can very quickly and easily validate the components. So we are back to our electrical schematic environment. Again, let's go open up that project that we would have created from scratch. Here I have one, just a simple one here. I've generically created it. There are some basic templates that I've created. Now, since I've defined the scheme symbol for the component that I created earlier, let's go on to add that. We'll go on to insert that symbol and we just want to make sure that that's the symbol that we would have selected. So connector left three pins. Let's place it over here. All right, we just accept the default, but for the manufacturer part, let's go search for that. Uh, we have got our component information. This is going to be a connector. It is uh, manufacturer XYZ, and that's triple zero, triple zero. So we've added this component in, and that's CN1. From here, let's go on to duplicate this part. I could go on to insert a new symbol, or I can just do a quick copy and paste. And what you'll see is that the mark for the component has been incremented accordingly, which is what um, Electrical is meant to do for you, even though you copied and pasted it. And I will just invert this component. So from this symbol here, I like to just draw some multiple wires to connect this two components here and that's it what I've done here is I've set up a very simple connection between these two connectors now let's go over to SOLIDWORKS and take a look at what happens in the 3D assembly now back in the 3D environment we are back to the test assembly there are no 3D components that exist in the assembly feature manager which is pretty obvious because we have not added any 3D components yet However, flipping over to the electrical manager, we find that there are two electrical components already defined here. These components represent the two connectors that we have defined on the schematic. Now, the lack of a tick in this box shows that the 3D component has not been inserted yet, as we've mentioned earlier. So one way of adding this component is to do a right mouse click and insert. By doing this, I'm inserting the file right into the 3D assembly. Now I could add the second component in the same manner or I could consider a different scenario. What if we already had a 3D component existing in the assembly? How would we tie up the electrical and mechanical component data on this level? Well, in order to do that, let me just simulate a case where I'm going to mirror this part here with respect to the front plane and what happens by doing this is that I am just mirroring my part and so we have a second component in the assembly now quite obviously this component isn't associated to this second connector yet what I can do is I can hit the right mouse click and choose to associate now when I do this one thing you will notice is that components that already have electrical details associated to it will appear transparent. This will ensure that we do not wrongly select a component again. I'm going to select this part here and by doing this we have associated both parts. As you can see here this is CN1 
this is CN2. All right. And finally, just to make sure that the components are working as they are supposed to, let's go on back to our electrical tab here and do a route wires. And let's see what happens here. We'll accept the defaults. Again, we're just testing out to make sure that things work. And of course, everything works out fine. This confirms that what we have done in part one and two of our presentation worked perfectly. So quick recap to validate the components, just create for our case here a schematic. You could, of course, use a line diagram. I just find it a bit easier for us to validate things with a schematic. Um, then you create the connections. Just hook up two parts, um, sorry, two components, and then you create a 3D assembly. You route the wires. Assuming that the information that's required have already been correctly defined, you will find that this information will automatically flow through from your schematics all the way to your 3D assembly. And with that, I come to the end of my three-part series. I hope you enjoyed this quick look. If you've got any feedback or questions, or even suggestions of topics that you would like me to cover, please contact me via the uh, few avenues I've listed here. Otherwise, thank you for your time. Once again, this is Alex Cock, Territory Technical Manager for the ANZ, signing off from this quick look session. Have a nice day.